Today, we have interesting stories for your enjoyment including one about Op's husbands who ranked his little niece and ended up in bigger troubles. Sit back and enjoy. Am I the idiot for calling the police after my brother dropped off his two kids at my workplace? My M31, brother M36 is a single, widowed, dad of two kids, my nephews, both under the age of 10. He used to have babysitters but ever since he met his new girlfriend he stopped hiring any help because his girlfriend claimed that she wanted the kids to warm up to and get used to her as the only woman in their life WTF. So he started asking me to watch the boys whenever he had something to do. I'd help if I'm able but I work a demanding job and need to cover full time. He for whatever reason refuses to acknowledge that. Days ago, he was going for lunch with his girlfriend to meet her friends and wanted me to have the boys. I told him I had to work but he begged me to take the day off. I refused and went to work. At 11 a. M a co-worker of mine entered the office and behind him were my nephews. I was flabbergasted he told me my brother dropped them off so they could stay with me. I was in a state of disbelief but also furious. I felt stuck and terrified my boss would see this and I get in trouble. I couldn't even take time off because of how busy I was. Out of frustration I called the police and explained what happened. They got a hold of my brother and he was forced to come to take them off me as well as get into trouble with the authorities who spent hours talking to him. My boss eventually found out and I had to leave work early and go home. In the evening, my brother called and started screaming at me calling me names of all sorts and saying that I not only ruined his meeting with his girlfriend and her friends but caused him to get in trouble with the police. He called me a vile sob and said that I could have had the kids with me for a couple of hours or even taken them home and taken the rest of the day off. We haven't been speaking but his girlfriend is constantly shaming me for what I'd done saying she treats the kids better than I do and that I should be ashamed for this. The top replies, not the idiot. That's child abandonment, plain and simple. The original poster replies, he'll probably argue that it's not child abandonment when the kids are left with family. Not saying agree. I'm just telling you how he'd respond if I use this argument with him. Regardless, our relationship is probably ruined after this. The second reply, you didn't consent, it's abandonment, even if he doesn't want to believe it. But here is what you need to lay out for your brother 1, he is a neglectful parent. GF doesn't want another woman around the kids but isn't really stepping up. 2. You didn't birth the children, not your responsibility 3. Why couldn't the children go to the meeting of their friends? Last time I checked, it's more appropriate to take children to meet with friends versus having them at work for. Start charging babysitting money, you refuse all requests in the future, but if you don't. Third reply, your brother is abdicating his responsibility to his children in favor of his GF. I'd say with encouragement from her. Let me see if I understand this correctly said GF who was okay with him dumping his kids without a word on someone who couldn't and said they wouldn't babysit thinks she treats the kids better than you do? No paid babysitters aren't BC she likes them either, it's so he has more money to spend on her. They're both entitled and delusional. Not the idiot. Second story, am I the idiot for refusing to borrow my wedding, made by my mum, dressed to my sister? I, 32 female, got married 7 years ago. My mom made my wedding dress and she also did the same for my older sister at her wedding nine years ago. Sadly, my mother passed away three years ago from cancer. My younger sister Jess, 27 female, is currently engaged and her wedding will be in one year. We recently met for coffee and she commented that she always wanted our mother to make her dress, but at the time she wasn't even with her current fiancé and now she can't anymore. After a little chat, she asked if I still had my wedding dress, as she would like to wear it too, as it is something my mother made. I was a little disconcerted and asked if it could be our sister's dress, she already borrowed it from someone else, as I was very attached to the wedding dress. She said she didn't want hers because it wasn't white, pastel pink, and my body and hers were more similar. I said I didn't want to, because even though we have similar bodies, it would need adjustment in the breasts and hips area. I don't want to, modify, the dress. But I could borrow her the veil so she can have something from our mother. 
She started complaining, saying that it wouldn't hurt me to borrow the dress. The adjustments would be minimal, she was the only one of the sisters who can't have something done by our mom and she basically has to turn to me to get something of hers. She practically begged me to borrow the dress. I feel bad for her, but I really don't want to modify something in the dress, because it's a memory of my mom and one of the best days of my life, it was just for me. In the face of all this, I don't feel comfortable borrowing the dress, but I could concede the veil. She walked away crying after I stood by my decision, saying that I was being selfish not to allow her to have any feelings close to having something done for our mother and not being able to share something so special with her too when she never will have something close to that. People are calling me an idiot, our father, fiancé, and in-laws, except my older sister who didn't choose sides, am I the idiot? Extra. It's not a dress I wear all the time OFC, but it's literally something that is unique to each daughter. The three of us have flower names, on my dress and my older sisters had details of our flowers. Modifying something so unique made entirely by my mother, someone else would come and modify it, it's really very difficult for me. The top comments. Nah. I'm so sorry for both of you. She's right that it isn't fair that she won't get a dress, but you would be losing yours. I think the veil is a good compromise if your mother made that as well. Or do you have your mother's dress? The second comment. I agree with Na. I would like to suggest for you, original poster. Could you and your older sister maybe get together and have a dress made for your younger sister's wedding? Get the flower details you mentioned, and have it made to her liking. It might not be plausible, as it could be pretty pricey. It also wouldn't be exactly the same since it didn't come from your mom. But maybe if it was a gift from both of you, and you lend her your veil, plus your older sister loans her an accessory she wore at her wedding, it might be almost as good. It could be your guy's gift to her. I'm sorry for the loss of your mother, and I wish all three of you lovely ladies the best no matter what happens next. The third comment. The veil is a good idea and it was lovely of you to offer it to her. Why don't you and your sister have a dress made for her with the flowers of her name on it? So while it won't be from your mom, it will be from her, big sisters. Honestly you are not the idiot and hopefully, she will accept this. My mom passed before I met my husband, so it really hurts that he never met her and that she never knew I found someone lovely after a couple of real awes. It was also really hard to plan a wedding without her. She was able to be there every step of the way for my sister, and I felt kind of lost. Luckily my sister stepped up. She was there to help me find a dress, came with me to seamstress appointments, gave me things of my grandma's that she'd inherited as my something borrowed and old, and really just channeled my mom so that I wouldn't feel alone or sad. If they can make the time to help her find the perfect dress, find someone who can alter it with a flower, lend some other things from mom, and just do the things mom did for them, it can really go a long way to make the day not feel like a big part is missing. Third story. Am I the idiot I lied to the people who I was babysitting for to get them to come home? Not the a-hole am 15 years old and I babysit to make money. I took a first aid course and a babysitting course. Last weekend one of my little sister's classmates' parents had a wedding to go to and asked if I would babysit. I asked how late they would need me and if I should pack an overnight bag if they were going to be staying out all night. They said that they would be home by midnight. So I checked with my dad if that was okay because he is my ride. He doesn't want me alone in a car with adults that he does not know. So my dad was there to pick me up at 11.50. The kids were all asleep and I was watching TV. I had texted them at 11 o'clock to double check that they would be on time. The mom texted me back, yes, at point 1, 2, 30 they still aren't there. I texted again, no answer. I called my dad and he is pissed. Not at me, 1 o'clock. I call them, no answer. My dad went and got a coffee at home and came back. He is all calm, not good, he is ready to blow. I texted every 15 minutes, no response. 2, 20 I have an idea. I texted them that someone tried to break into their garage but that the alarm scared them away. They were home drunk in an Uber in 15 minutes. My dad made them pay me for my extra time before we left. 
He told me that I'm not allowed to babysit for them again unless I charged them for an overnight stay. Yesterday at school I saw the mom when I was picking up my sisters after school. She gave me shit for scaring her and her husband. That they had checked their security cameras and no one tried to break in. I said sorry the alarm went off so I called you. She called me a liar. Which is fair. But I don't feel bad about what I did. They lied to me first. My mom says I should have just sucked it up but my dad says that they broke our deal. I kind of feel bad for tricking them into coming home from their party. But they could have told me it was an overnight or texted me that they were going to be late. My dad has brought me an overnight bag before when that has happened. EDITM my mom wanted me to call the police to see if they had been in an accident. But I thought that if they were still at the wedding it would cause a scene. The top replies. Not the idiot. The fact that the parents said yes they would be home at 12 and then couldn't slash wouldn't respond for 2 hours is nonsense. Where she gets off being pissed at you is crazy. Please tell me they apologized when they finally got home. The original poster replies. They did not. Second reply. Next time just text them. If you are not home in the next 15 minutes, since our agreed upon time was X, I will be calling the proper authority for child abandonment. They were neglectful parents. They are in the wrong. Their poor planning is not your problem. Third reply. Why would you have a next time? They lied, jerked you around, came home drunk, most likely would have stiffed you for the extra time if your dad hadn't been there, and then were rude and aggressive the next time you saw them. You texted them an hour before they were to be home and they assured you they'd be on time. You had a ride there waiting for you. They wasted your time and your dad's time and odds are they'd have wasted both of your entire nights if you didn't call with the emergency you had, and I doubt they'd have paid what all they owed without prodding from dad. Plenty of people need help with childcare. I'm sure you can find plenty of other people to set for who will respect your time and your boundaries. Not the idiot. Fourth story. Am I the idiot defending my husband after a prank went horribly wrong? My husband, Jaden, 26, loves jokes and pranks and stuff. I'll admit I'm not one for the, and find most of them dumb, but our daughter Lucy, 5, loves them. They basically do a bunch of stupid pranks to each other, and to be fair Jaden does keep it harmless. Last month we got some realistic looking spider toys with other decorations. Since we got them, Jaden and Lucy have basically taken turns putting them around the house to scare each other or me. I honestly find it annoying but the two of them love it. Lucy does usually get scared, but when she realizes what it is she laughs and finds it funny or tells her dad off, it's actually adorable when she tells him off though, and Jaden always pretends he is scared even when she gives it away beforehand by giggling and watching him. So about two weeks ago Jaden set it to fall on her when she opened her toy box in the playroom. Lucy didn't open it and apparently he forgot it. Later that week we had my family over including my brother Leon, and my nieces, Tara 3 and Zoe 6, over. Zoe was badly bitten by a spider when she was younger, even had to go to the hospital. Since then she is deathly afraid of them, I would go as far as to call it a phobia. The kids went to play and the spiders fell on them. Zoe completely freaked out and just melted down. We came down and saw what happened. Jaden did apologize and tried to cheer her up, but Leon was furious. He basically accused us of doing it on purpose, that we should know better and just calling us idiots. We did apologize and explained that it wasn't meant for Zoe, but my brother did not listen to him at all. Leon left early with my son-in-law and nieces, and the whole night was kind of ruined. I've tried to talk to him after, but Leon is still pretty pissed with us. It's been a week and he's still acting like we tried to murder Zoe. I've tried explaining again that it was an accident and mistake but he basically thinks it's too convenient a mistake, and that if it is Jaden is still an idiot for being so immature and I'm an idiot for defending him. So now he basically refuses to see us unless Jaden is banned, which is ridiculous. I do feel bad that it went so wrong and I understand that it was horrible mistake. But it wasn't meant to happen. It was meant to be for Lucy who likes these stupid pranks. I think Leon's overreacting and he thinks I just don't really care about my niece. The top replies. Not the idiot. 
you've apologized and explained what happened, if he still wants to be mad then leave him to it. The original poster replies, yeah that's true, but I would rather him come around. I would like to have my nieces around, and my husband does love all the kids. Him being banned isn't great anyway. Second reply, I'm sorry, but pranks go bad sometimes. It sucks but that's just the way it is. Those that prank other people risk alienating those who hate pranks or who are hurt by the prank. Your husband and daughter need to learn this lesson. It may take years to heal this relationship if it ever does. That is life. The third reply, I'm sorry, but pranks go bad sometimes. It sucks but that's just the way it is. Those that prank other people risk alienating those who hate pranks or who are hurt by the prank. Your husband and daughter need to learn this lesson. It may take years to heal this relationship if it ever does. That is life. The fourth reply, this isn't really a prank gone wrong though. It was original poster's own home that relatives were visiting. They just happened to have spider toys around. I get a phobia, but when you go to someone's house, you can't expect them to clear away everything you're afraid of. The bottom line is that it's sad she was scared, but it's no one's fault, and the brother just needs to get over himself, and maybe work with the child on their fear to try to make it easier for her. Not the idiot in any way. Everyone is the idiot thanks for the upvotes. It was a set of unfortunate circumstances, but nothing ill intended for anyone. And I don't think pranks mean cruel intentions either, or that a prank automatically means cruelty or ill intended, whether or not parties are in agreement. Hopefully, Leon gets over it for the sake of his child, because I think he's making the phobia worse for the kid by acting this way.